Heard will throw Friday, uh, Holman will throw Saturday, and then we'll play it by ear from there. Uh, four games, there's too much to get through in the first two games. Um, Gage Jump hasn't pitched a whole ton in the scrimmages lately. What is, is, is he all right, basically? Um, we get players ready for the season in different ways sometimes. That that's, that's what we're doing. And, you know, coming off the history, we're always going to take care of the players. And uh, that's what we're doing right now. Um, he, uh, he'll be just fine. Maybe uh, just expand upon Thatcher and why this is a, a good moment for him. To kind of you know, I think uh, I don't look at it that way. I, I look at it as the next game on the schedule. Um, I certainly think um, we're happy to have him pitching. I think if you look at the improvement at the end of last season, really, you know, whatever you want to call it, mid-May, you know, through the College World Series. Uh, he showed uh, pitchability, showed, um, you know, ability to manage the game. And, you know, if you're going to pitch on any Friday, you know, and it just happens to be this Friday, you know, the expectations, uh, you know, of giving your team a quality start and chance to win. And I think he has the ability and mental disposition to do that and uh, proved that uh, time and again at the end of last season. And then, you know, the fall, I thought he really, really improved throughout the fall. And uh, obviously, you look at him now, he's physical, strong. Um, bullpen was great yesterday. Um, Ryan Lovato, the bullpen catcher, don't think he moved one time. And um, excited to, to start us off with him. It's uh, very rare, you know. One guy pitches the last game of the season you win and pitches the first game. Um, I saw something, I want to say it was Vanderbilt, like for the last 15 years, like their pitcher that led and wins has not returned the next year. So to have a guy like Thatcher, you know, because they're moving on in the draft, obviously, to have a guy that has, you know, eight wins, that type of experience to, to be back this year is a great thing for our team. What do you want to see out of your first year, what's, I guess what, what questions your mind like, you'd like to see, not answered, but maybe things you're kind of interested in? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously we treat every game like a playoff game, so the goal is to win each game in front of you and then improve while we're doing that. And, and part of improving is finding out your best team, you know, what that looks like. And, and we're not close to that right now, I, just to be frank. Um, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's actually in a good way. Um, you know, the emergence of some players in uh, from the fall till as we sit today has been remarkable. I mean, there'll be guys that'll run out on the mound or positionally, especially like, well, would, you know, in my head, I didn't have that player in the, in the projections. And um, so we have a lot of work to do to, to sort that out. And that, that's a good thing. I just think we have have more options maybe than I thought coming out of November. Uh, what about uh, Luke Coleman? Yeah. And, uh, just, I know you talked about it before, but what, what attracted you guys to get him from Alabama? Yeah, I love Luke. Um, you know, just as we were preparing to play them last year, it, it, we prepare a lot, you know, and watching, you know, the previous few outings and looking at, um, you know, what he does in terms of uh, flood the strike zone with multiple pitches. He's a great athlete. He fields his position. He's quick to the plate. He's got a low heartbeat and um, can strike people out. Can get weak contact, and uh, it's just such a such a key part of what we're doing. And uh, he's pitched well uh, the last couple weeks, and um, he's just he's been what I thought he would be. And uh, he's a phenomenal human being too. You know, it's exactly what you want to have in the in the program is. Uh, you know, great talented players as Luke is that are great people. And, um, you know, kind of sad we're only going to have him for one year, you know, because he's a good, good pitcher and a great person. Coach, talk about playing the games during the day instead of the evening. Yeah, I think uh, the weather unpredictability is the first thing. The second thing is we have multiple teams here. And, you know, I'm a college baseball fan and pull for coaches, but, you know, LSU is my priority and I want to make sure we – have the best chance to play all four of our games. And uh, I thought we had a phenomenal crowd last year on opening day. 
Um, and I thought we had a phenomenal crowd when we played Southern on Tuesday at two o'clock. It was a beautiful day, and I was just kind of looking around, going like, "This is sweet," you know. So I'm excited about that, and you know, it looks like you know we're a little bit like this on Friday and Saturday uh, as far as the weather, but. I think it just gives us the best chance to play all four of our games. How much do you anticipate getting a lot of different looks as far as your It's one game at a time. And, uh, you know, I'm still learning a little bit about our opponents and matchups and those types of things. We're going to, everything we do is in the context of winning the game, um, like I said, but trying to, you know, move ourselves towards our best team. I think there's uh, a lot more possibility of that than I thought and that's a credit to our, our players the the improvement of uh, about five position players since we returned has been remarkable and I'm really excited about that so um, there may be a little more than I thought but you know it'll all be in the context of, of winning the game and we got a few things we got I'm not going to go into each one of them but we got a few guys just with small nagging nicked up things right now that might may play into that in the majors, they say nothing's like opening day, right? Yeah. Or, uh, how much of that is the same in college? I mean, there's something about that first game. And, you know, I, I think it's special. I think in the context of college baseball, we don't have a spring training, you know, where you're playing anybody else. Fall baseball, you're scrimmaging a lot. You know, the NCAA has limitations on days, hours, what you can and can't do. And then you only get 56 of them guaranteed, 56 games. So that's a third of what a Major League Baseball schedule is. So I think it's special, and, you know, I don't take them for granted for sure. And uh, there's a lot of work goes into this. This isn't just, hey, when you get the team the first day of school. It's like I'm on a plane flying out here two and a half years ago and probably trying to talk to somebody that would that's impacting this year's team. You know, so from my perspective, you know, it's it's a – always evolving deal to put together each team and so to finally get to the field is is pretty cool and my players are excited and uh it's a, it's a test kind of more than the excitement you know we look at it as a test of mental strength to deal with the things that come along with those you know uh, excitement and emotions and those types of things to that degree how much do you feel like your team has been able to put aside what last year was and focus on those phenomenal guys? phenomenal like this um this month has been awesome in terms of that. I mean, these guys doesn't guarantee us one bit of success, but could not have higher marks on uh, how I believe we've improved in the last month and the work that they put in. And and if you're doing that, the, the focus is on the task at, at hand. And um, I think we handled that part of it about as good. I'd give us an A-plus on that. 100%. I'm super proud of those guys. Uh, definitely wanted both of them to come back. And, um, you know, the player leadership thing is hard to find. You know, um, you know, as young people, sometimes they have to get over the hump of, I want to be liked before I want to be respected. And those guys are just, they're men now. And um, they command a lot of respect from their teammates. You know, both of them, you know, as we're sorting through lineup things, you know, I've had times where they've been the guy and the times they haven't been the guy and have handled it so well that both of them massively contributed to a national championship. And so any role of anybody on the team or any experience that somebody may have, those guys have had. And they've handled it awesome. And, uh, you know, I, I see things that make me very proud of, of those guys. And, you know, it's cool to have, you know, five or six more months, you know, with them on the team. Gavin Gendry has been trying to, uh, I guess, improve his, his fastball. At least that's what he told us. Um, what sort of progress have you seen from him on the mound, and particularly with that pitch? I think he's he's thrown strikes, and uh, I think uh, his last outing, which was Sunday, uh, was his best outing. And I think um, I'm excited to put him in the game and see him execute that because I do I do think it's a little bit a little bit better. You mentioned getting games in during the day with the earlier day games. Is there any concern about the weather for opening day this weekend? Yeah, I think there is. And I think uh, it's just if we're playing earlier, it just gives us the opportunity to move it back. I think the positive is it's warmer, you know, than it was last, last year. It was 29 degrees at 6 o'clock on opening day. It was 47 at first pitch. 
so or something like that so the fact that it's going to be warmer we have a little bit more flexibility which is why part of the reason we we're doing that um but we'll play it by ear you know we we want to get out there friday um i don't see any scenario where we would flip the schedule where our game's not the first game played you know so um we'll see how that goes what have you seen The Chiefs just yeah. repeat to those champions. What, what in your mind is a, a, a something that the championship program, successful, yeah. successful programs and teams have? Man, that's a that great that's a great question. That's a th- that is a great <laughs> question. So I really respect Andy Reid. I, I really respect Andy Reid. I think the first thing that comes to mind is I remember watching them play on Christmas Day, and I was like they're not themselves like this is not like they're not in sync like something's off and I think they lost to the Raiders if I remember right and it was a terrible football game and I was like my dad is a huge 49ers fan and so somehow we were talking about it and I literally think I said to him like well you don't have to worry about the Chiefs this year like they're just they're not on it like and then you know they regrouped I think they won the next week or, or won the next two weeks and then they won a, a home game, like playing in like I'm sure the Miami Dolphins love playing in like negative 10 degree weather. And then they went on the road and beat the two best teams in the in the AFC. And so like very methodically, so responding to adversity. Um, and we talked about that Sunday, like, hey, I want you to watch the game, and then I want you to watch something bad happen, and then watch how somebody responds to it and tell me the outcome on the game. Well, Mahomes threw up interception like on the first pass of the second half and then he turned back into Patrick Mahomes like so that had zero effect on him so I think handling diversity uh, the execution like the play the game winning play like the fourth and one run so like the command the players have of themselves you know they're just out there executing in like the biggest moments of that so perseverance and just being able to focus on execution and and not freaking out when you know something bad happens and, and continuing to play so big time fan like you know i mean tom brady's tom brady but number 15's moving in that direction so i know it's a baseball press conference sorry I'm talking <laughs> about football. well when, when saban was here and they won the title the next year he said we're not defending anything yeah because that title's won yeah it was taken away yeah. it seems to be the same thing yeah you're saying. we're not defending is that kind of the same yeah i i think so um i did not necessarily steal that from him um I actually you know was listening to John Gordon like over Christmas who actually came and talked to our team on Wednesday which was phenomenal um but he was talking about talking to the Tampa Bay Lightning a few years ago around that concept and I think in in answering Michael's question about being good moving forward it's over the break that was my way of saying you know we are attacking a new opportunity it's a completely different team you know those we all know those guys from last year I mean those those dudes are special you know what I mean with with Paul and Dylan and Trey and Cade and Gavin and Ty and go on and on is this is not that team like it it might as well be a a different you know team you know it, it is a different team so I think we have an opportunity in front of us um that you know hasn't been it hasn't been easy to do well recently you know whether it's a defending champion i mean you know 2012 arizona won it and didn't go to the postseason three years in a row after that um you know ucla won it in 13 and didn't do very well uh coastal carolina won it in 16 and didn't go to the postseason in 17 and then you know mississippi state will miss so that guarantees you nothing and it's not going to win any game for us this year so we need to do what we need to do to attack this opportunity and like I said, high marks for the players for how they're approaching that. Stephen Milam's been pretty impressive, at least during the preseason practices. Um, what's sort of the key to his success in terms of just handling you know, that, cup, that level of pitching already? Well, he's a really good player, and uh, we wouldn't have brought him here if he wasn't a really good player. And sometimes it just takes it takes a little bit. And here's what I would tell you is, High school baseball in Las Cruces, New Mexico, you're not facing Luke Holman, Thatcher Hurd, Gage Jump, Nate Ackenhausen, 
and I mean that can be smothering and then you're dealing with that caliber of pitching and then learning how to deal with a little bit of adversity and failure and then you're practicing more than you ever have in your life I mean he legitimately said to his like gosh coach now I know why we're good like I mean I mean so and then school and so like you're you're plugging and this is for all freshmen you're plugging them into this environment that they have no way to be prepared for when they show up here but at the end of the day he's a really good player and so I'd never like doubted any of that I laid out on a eight and a half by 11 sheet of what he needs to do to be the best player he can be and positively affect our team and literally came back and he is checking all of those boxes. And so super pumped to, to have him here for the next three years. I'm wondering if you're having any Bradley Cooper withdrawals. Yeah, I mean, geez. Um, yeah, Bryce Collins was on my team for five years in a row. Um, you know, I think we recruited really hard on the pitching side of it. I think, you know, asking about him, I mean, he pitched in more wins than any pitcher in college baseball over the last three years. So, you know, in that grouping that I just listed, I mean, Riley would be right at the top of that. I think uh, the best medicine, though, is we have real guys and options to fill those innings, and um, I'm excited about that. And there's a lot of guys I can't wait to, you know, hand them the ball or have the previous pitcher hand them the ball here over the next couple of weeks. I think you might see a little of both. Um, there's a couple guys that are candidates to, to pitch a lot. Um, I want to say at least four, maybe five of them pitched twice last weekend to kind of simulate pitch, day off pitch. And uh, they were all as good the second time as they were the first time, maybe even better in a couple cases. Um, so that was great to see. I think, you know, there's several of them that I'm confident they're going to be very consistent, you know, at executing. And, you know, you need that. You know, just, there's thunderbolt coming, you know, at some point, whether it's injury, adversity, somebody's not as good as you think. And there's a few guys, though, that the, the heart and the head is right to where they'll be able to respond multiple times. I don't know. You know, I, I really, I told the players, like, I pulled some quote the very first meeting, like, comparisons, like the thief of joy. And so I'd be like a hypocrite if I was trying to do that all the time. And so I just, I really haven't thought about that. Again, it's like this opportunity, like flags, as Coach Saban said, the flag's never coming down. We don't have to defend that. Um, I think uh, I'm just excited for getting this thing going. Like they, they deserve to play and in a good position to play. I, I'm excited about what we have for, for 2024. Right, else for Jay? <clears throat> Coach, is there a, any update on Chase Shores and possibly his return for the season? Yeah, he's, uh, he's just hit this point where you, you have a two-week break in your throwing program. And he just finished his first week of the two-week break. But all signs positive and, you know, I'd love to get him back in there. You know, we're exploring, you know, every possibility of having him back in some type of capacity. But, you know, you mentioned high-end talent. Like, that's as high-end talent as, as you get to college baseball without losing in the draft. So we got to do that right. You know, if, if there's an avenue that it's right and we're not putting him at risk, there's nobody more than me that wants to see that big dude on the mound chucking it. And um, worst moment of the season last year for me. People ask me that all the time is when he got hurt, you know, um, because he's that's how good I think he is. So excited to get him back, progressing well, start throwing again next week. Um, don't have a timetable yet. It would definitely be way more towards the very end of the season, you know, if at all.